Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. The critically acclaimed novel Finding a Soulful Love by Lucinda Johnson traces the journey taken by Cynthia as she began to search for love. It takes you through several relationships that didn't work out, how she turned to an old friend to help her on that quest for a soulful love, and how it turns out in the end that he was that love. Lucinda was born in Jacksonville, Florida, currently resides in Boothwin, Pennsylvania, has a BA in accounting from Cheney University, has two boys, a wonderful daughter-in-law, and six grandchildren. Finding a Soulful Love is her first work of, work of fiction inspired by her true love, and Lucinda Johnson, author of Finding a Soulful Love, joins us on This Week in America. Lucinda, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, and thank you for having me on your show. I love the story. The book is receiving excellent reviews. I mentioned your first work of fiction. Was there anything surprising you discovered in, in writing your book, in particular writing the first book? Any surprises that you, you encountered as you were writing Finding a Soulful Love? Well, and the talent that I had to do that was surprising because I never thought about writing a book. And as I sat down and started writing, it surprised me a lot of the um, scenarios that I would come up for the different characters in the book. And you really do that. I'm in reading the reviews. One review talks about the book grabs you uh, by both arms, doesn't let you go till the end. You really can't put it down. You want to continue the story and finding a soulful love. Others say, boy, I was in tears. I was heartbroken with what Cynthia went through. The book is so relatable. Talk about the inspiration for the story. Where did this idea come from for finding a soulful love? Well, initially, the idea came from my companion. I would make Hallmark cards for him, and then I would leave him little love notes. And then um, he thought I had a romantic soul from that. So he suggested that I write a book. So in taking that suggestion from him, I decided to look at um, my experience through life as a whole and the different types of love that we are all trying to search for. You know, good people in our lives, we're searching for that love and approval. So the characters were created from that. And then when I got back into to the courting environment and the getting to know you stage, that's where the stories came into play. And it's interesting, searching is really a good word, isn't it? We're really out there looking to find somebody for, for love and the various types of love, which you go into in the book, Finding a Soulful Love. Let's talk about the main character. I mentioned Cynthia. Once you get this idea that, okay, I think I'm going to write this story, You've got to come up with a story and you have to come up with the characters. Let's talk, first of all, about Cynthia. How did you develop Cynthia? Cynthia was developed from experiences. Cynthia was one who wanted to have that family love first because Cynthia went through trials and tribulations in looking for love because as a teenager, her whole world was turned upside down. Everything that she thought was her reality became a little dis discarded. So she was raised by her grandmother, who she thought for 13 years was her actual mother. And she found out later when her grandmother got sick, that she did indeed have a mother, mother in a different state. And she also had siblings in that relationship as well. Um, the siblings uh, that she thought were her cousins turned out to be her sister. So she started out looking for a family love because she felt she was thrown into something new and she just couldn't handle that. And a lot of times um, when she got frustrated, Cynthia would run to her neighbor, Teresa, that would help her to understand what it was like to be in that situation, to calm her down when she needed to be calm. And then as she went, continued to go through that journey, Cynthia went off to college 
And there she met another one of her friends, Christina. And Christina helped her to understand what a family truly was once again. That piece she knew when she was under the age of 13 became um, peaceful for her again as a teenager with her friend Christina and her family. And then, of course, there's those trials and tribulations that she went through with love and loss. She loved, but she was never truly in love. It seems like it was always a reason why Cynthia's relationships didn't work out, either because the relationship was abusive, there was jealousy, um, there was that long distance relationship that wouldn't work out for her. So Cynthia was getting a little upset and wanted to have some some more calm and peace in her life when it came to that ultimate soulful love that she desired. So she went to a friend that she knew from college and she said, well, he can help her out. He um, he knows her a little bit so she can get him to help her to find that soulful love. They can talk, have conversation. He can introduce her to some friends of his um, that which he knew would not be abusive, jealousy, because he knew those were characters that she did not want in her true love. But in time, we come to grow closer and turns out that he ended up being that soulful love for Cynthia. Well, that's so interesting because she turns to to him, Craig, and he's she's not really looking for him, is she? She's just looking for 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 help, a friend that she can lean on to help her through this period. And suddenly, she finds that this is actually who I've been looking for. And it's the book is it touches emotions on so many different levels. You can imagine Cynthia when she finds out her mother isn't really her mother, her cousins aren't really her cousins, and what she goes through. And to deal with teen pregnancy there as well, don't you? I mean, you go through uh, some real challenges. You take Cynthia through some real challenges growing up. Yes, Cynthia went through a lot of changes with the teen pregnancy. Um, the changes that she went through there was that he was not ready to be a father. He did not deny the the um, the child being born, but he just wasn't ready. So she had to go that alone in already a dysfunctional household and trying to raise him to be of peace. And as she went through her loves and losses, a lot of it was based around making sure that he was not um, an environment that said, this is not for you. He was the top priority for Cynthia. And that changed it and caused some of the love that she had to be lost loves. And before she finds Craig, she's looking for love and in pretty much to quote the song in all the wrong places. She has some bad experiences, but one after another, you go through physical abuse is something she has to deal with as well. The book is Finding a Soulful Love. Lucinda Johnson is our guest on the program. The book is published by Stratton Press, their website. You can order the book there, stratton-press.com, the bookstore. Lucinda's website is sure.bliss.com. Uh, the book available, basically Amazon, all the places. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can uh, link on directly, get information on Lucinda, and order a copy of the book there as well. When you started out writing this, did you have a firm outline? Did you know where all of these different storylines were going to go? Or did some of this evolve as you were telling the story of Cynthia? It evolved as I was telling the story of Cynthia. Like I say, it started out with that friendship love. So it involved in that whole scenario of getting to know a new family. Then like she went through the process of trying to raise her son in love at the same time. So as she went through the different relationships, that's how it evolved from one stage of that relationship to the next. You do an excellent job of moving the story along. You keep our attention throughout the entire book, Finding a Soulful Love by Lucinda Johnson, author and our our guest on the program. 
Let's talk a little bit about developing these characters because you do an excellent job of developing them. And you've got a number of characters, all with distinct personality, distinct traits. How challenging was that to come up with the characters that uh, that enter Cynthia's life? That was pretty challenging for me for some of the characters. Um, the scenes where I have my girlfriends, I had a lot of support from girlfriends. Um, we would have a monthly meeting where we would generally sit around and talk about relationships. That part wasn't too bad because, you know, women, you know, they do that a lot. We sit around <laughs> and we talk about our relationships. That's what I hear. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So, and then you have um, college, you you get that boyfriend in college that you hope is going to be the love of your life. And um, his challenge was leaving because he was a year ahead of me. So when he left, it became a long distance relationship. So the involvement in that relationship took her through a little challenge in keeping up with him after he left school while she was still there. Um, the marriage that Cynthia endured, it started out great. And then the challenge came in that relationship when her husband lost his job. And then it became a more of an abusive relationship because of the drinking that he would do. And then that was very challenging in coming up with the plot for that whole story. The, the hardest plot I had in my story was going from being a cousin to a sibling and going from a grandmother to a mom that I never knew. That was the hardest plot to write about because that's where a lot of her teenage life began and that's where a lot of challenges begin for Cynthia. And as you're reading that, you can sort of put yourself in that position. How would you react when you found all of these things that you thought were established in your life suddenly are not? And it's redefining, you know, mother and siblings and, and all of that. And you bring the story to life in, in Lucinda's book, Finding a Soulful Love. Let's talk about the title. Uh, soulful Love, the word soulful is so important to you and sort of behind the inspiration in writing the book. What is a soulful love and why is that so important to find uh, love on that level? The soulful love is a love that you want to feel in your heart and in your soul, whether it be that companion that you want, but you also want that love with your family. You want to feel that no matter what in your heart, that is your family and you would do anything in the world for them. Your love is your love and you would do anything in the world for that person because you feel that person with all of your being. I mentioned that's this. my opinion in regards to that soulful love. Well, it makes so much sense and it gets uh, people again thinking love is there are different levels, different degrees of love. And that's another thing that uh, you, you think about as, as you're reading this, this so well written novel, finding a soulful love by Lucinda Johnson. Her website is sure S U E R S U R E dash bliss dot com book stratton dash press dot com in their bookstore all of this on our website this week in america dot us i mentioned a first time writer what was this like for you how important how excited are you now the book is actually published people are reading it and, and responding to the story that you that you've created what's this whole experience been like for you it's been very exciting um that People are enjoying reading the novels, the reviews that I've been getting from family and friends. There have been a few acquaintances that I know that have also read the book and they found it to be interesting. They tell me, you know, it's a emotional roller coaster for them that they can see themselves in some of the scenes that I have in there. Like the being in a relationship for so many years and coming out and trying to find yourself again and get to know someone. Um, there's a scenario in there where Cynthia goes to the club for the first time after 30 years 
and she dresses as if she's in her roaring 20s to go into the club and she realizes, oh, this is not for her. She's not initially getting any dances. You know, she's wondering why people are looking at her all weird. And then she realizes it's the way that she's dressed. Of course, she, she don't know the new dances that are out there, but she gives it a try. <laughs> that, yes. So she, yeah, so she pulls back from that. And then there's a time when you you can relate to dating and then there's the guys that will say, oh, I'm single. Nice to meet you. You know, you get to talk to them and then you go and visit. And then the next thing you know, they get this phone call and it's their girlfriend saying, I'm downstairs. So now you got this scenario that you have to play out to say, OK, how am I going to handle this? Am I going to end up getting in a fight? Am I going to hide in the closet or am I just going to stand up and just walk out and be like, OK, this is it. I'm not going through that again which is what initially caused her to decide to turn to a friend in the first place because it was just too much drama trying to do it on her own. Lucinda Johnson, our guest on the program, her book is Finding a Soulful Love. Again, I mentioned first book. There are probably people listening who have not written a book but would like to do that, aspiring first-time writers. What advice would you give them? And I, I'm thinking of maybe some of the challenges that you had to go through would be helpful to them. For example, are you sharing too much as you're writing? Are you thinking, no, I need to go back and tone that down, or I need to go back and add a little bit to that, or I don't know where to go from here. You've got the uh, the writer's block that everybody talks about. What are some of the, the challenges for a first-time writer that they they need to be aware of and get over? Well, I would think that as a first-time writer, in my opinion, you want to first figure out what your plot is. And as you mentioned, you want to make sure that you tell you tell as much as you need to tell for what it is that you want your um, people to read yes. that you wrote. You want them to see the character and be able to relate to the character and to see that there's some experience in what it is that you're writing about. The book is Finding a Soulful Love. A couple minutes left in the program. Lucinda Johnson, our, our guest on the program. Let's talk about the process of writing. It's interesting. Some writers like to set aside certain times of day to write, write maybe on a daily basis. Others say, I write when the mood strikes. I would think a problem would be when to stop writing. Once all these ideas cop, uh, start coming, uh, maybe it's three o'clock in the morning and you're still at the computer putting your story together. What's your day like as a writer? Do you establish a, a, a rigid schedule that every day or every other day I, I write? I didn't have a schedule. Like you said, it was just when things would come to you as you were in your storyline. So you would think that this is a good time to write about my mom. So I'm going to sit here and write what I can write. And then if I come across a block, I can get up because of the plot that I'm in and the mold that I'm in. I can look at pictures. I can go back down memory lane and think about some of the things that took place um, as I was growing up in that environment. Or I could just put things down, watch TV, let an idea click. Because sometimes you can get ideas from TV. You, you see, oh, that's right. I oh, remember yes. that happened to me. So then that give you that initiative to pick that pen back up and I'm going to tell my age here, pick that <laughs> pen back up and start writing down what it is that you want to notate at that particular point in time that helps you with that block that you initially had. Or if you just try to stay in it, it becomes too much that you do need to step back away from it, just like you do with work. You have to step back for a minute to remember something. And then when you come back to it, it's, it just flows. A couple of minutes left here. I want to ask you about where you go from here. Everybody I'm reading reviews, like can't wait for the next book from Lucinda Johnson. Are you working on something now? Yes. I'm going to start with Cynthia and identifying where that love went and how well that is, whether or not it turned into a marriage, that they get engaged, um, where 
there are any other siblings involved, it'll be a story based on her life with Craig. Fantastic. That sort of continuation as you were writing, finding a soulful love was in the back of your mind that maybe this could be the first of, uh, of at least several stories, several books on with uh, with Cynthia. Not until I started hearing some reviews, I thought that would be my first and only book because it was something that I wasn't sure that I could initially do in the first place. But as I wrote that book and saw the enjoyment that it gave me from writing that book, and then, like I said, hearing the reviews that I've gotten from family and friends, I'm ready to start writing again. Well, and everybody is glad to hear that and looking for the follow-up. The book is Finding a Soulful Love by Lucinda Johnson. I'm, where's the best place to buy the book? I mentioned stratton-press.com, the publisher. Your website, sure, S-U-R-E-bliss.com. Uh, those places work. Uh, any place in particular you would send them to, uh, to purchase a copy? You can also purchase the book from Amazon. You can purchase it from Barnes and Nobles, Goodreads, and BAM, which is Books A Million. That's fantastic. The book's available. Again, the, the, the usual places you can find a book, the publisher as well, and Lucinda's website. And it'd be a great place at Lucinda's website, sure-bliss.com, to uh, keep up with her, how she's coming with the uh, with the second book. Uh, Lucinda, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Congratulations on the overwhelming success that you've had with the uh, your first book, Finding a Soulful Love. Good luck with the uh, the continuation of the story. Hopefully, we'll be able to talk about that as well. Thank you for being with us on the program. And thank you for having me. I would just also like to mention that I will be doing a pop-up in New York, Brooklyn, New York, on December the 5th. Fantastic information. And that information can be found on my website as well as Facebook and that- Instagram. Okay, so you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Lucinda Johnson. That will get get me to you. Yes. Okay, that is great. So exciting things happening here. Not just the holiday is coming up, but information, uh, exciting information on sharing the book with others as well. Lucinda Johnson has been our guest. The book is Finding a Soulful Love. All the information on the website this week in America.us. Lucinda's website, sure, S-U-R-E dash bliss dot com. We're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.